How you doing guys? Welcome to another episode of Plumbing's Cool. And this is how you properly and easily descale a tankless water heater. So I guess the first question we need to answer is what is descaling and why do we need to do it for a tankless water heater, say compared to a traditional tank water heater? Well, typically descaling is exactly that you're removing scale deposits from the delicate heat exchanger that's located inside the tankless water heater. Scale refers to the residual elements of calcium and magnesium minerals that exist in our water supply, which get left behind and build up a rock-like coating all along the inner surfaces of piping and more obviously around fixture outlets, such as kitchen faucets and shower heads. Hard water in and of itself is not harmful to consume and arguably healthy since our bodies require calcium and magnesium in order to thrive. And while it looks ugly, the buildup on surfaces of fixtures and faucets doesn't do much damage to them, but it does create havoc in a tankless water heater and causes it to run inefficiently or to stop heating water altogether, which is why it should be descaled every 6 to 12 months, depending on the hardness of your water. Thankfully, water scale is easy to remove with a bit of know-how, some simple equipment, and good old inexpensive household white vinegar. Here's what you're going to need. A low horsepower electric submersible pump with an outlet that has a 3 quarter inch male hose thread or at least an adapter for it. One word of warning, do not confuse 3 quarter inch hose thread with 3 quarter inch standard pipe thread. They look the same at first glance, but hose threads have their threads spaced slightly further apart, what we call pitch or threads per inch or TPI in the plumbing field. Here's a 3 quarter inch brass adapter that shows both thread types on opposite sides. The submersible pump can be purchased at your local plumbing supplier, big box store, or even online. This one was actually purchased from Amazon for somewhere around hundred bucks. You're gonna need a few gallons of household white vinegar. Check with your water heater manufacturer's instructions to be sure that it doesn't require any specialized descaling solution. But simple household white vinegar often does an amazing job. A standard five gallon bucket. It's important to make sure the bucket is clean and free from any dirt or debris. Two hoses with female ends and rubber washers on both sides, long enough to reach the length between the bucket and the tankless water heater. Five foot long washing machine hoses, like you see here, work perfectly. And a clean rag or some paper towel for cleaning up any spilled water or vinegar. I can almost certainly reassure you that there'll certainly be some. So here's how you do it. Unplug the water heater from its power outlet and turn off its gas supply valve. You definitely don't want the heater operating or firing up while you carry out this procedure. Okay, so if your water heater was installed properly, you should have what are called service valves here. What service valves typically allow you to do is service the unit on a periodic basis, namely to descale. So the way they work is you should have two handles, a blue handle and a red handle. If these were installed properly, the blue handle serves the cold coming in to the unit and the red handle serves the and controls the water coming out of the unit and going to the rest of the house and the fixtures. So what you're going to first do, if you notice here, there are little caps. These caps are just covering some male three quarter inch hose threads. These are special three way valves which do two things at the same time. They isolate the unit's cold water inlet and hot water outlet, and they open the hose connection side to allow you to circulate your vinegar descaling chemicals. So this is how we're gonna do it. Remove the service caps, if any. You're probably gonna get a bit of water coming out here. Connect the hoses to the unit's service valves and hand tighten. For now, simply drape the two hose ends into the bucket or a nearby drain. Turn each service valve handle a quarter turn, starting with the cold. This will isolate your water heater from the rest of the plumbing and will open up the service ports. When you open the valves, expect some water to come out from the other ends of the hoses. So make sure that the hose ends discharge into the container or a nearby drain to catch any water trapped inside the unit. Insert the submersible pump into the bucket and install the three quarter inch male hose adapter to the pump's outlet if you haven't yet, tightening it snug by hand. You shouldn't need to apply any Teflon tape to the male threads in this case. Connect the cold side open hose end to the pump's male 3 quarter inch outlet. And place a hot side end so that it discharges toward the bottom of the bucket or container. Be sure to secure the loose hose end so that the pump's force doesn't cause it to jump out and spray your house full of stinky vinegar. This setup will create a circulation system of sorts. The pump sends vinegar into the unit through the cold side which will make its way through the heat exchanger, do its descaling magic, and exit back out into the bucket, ready to be circulated again. Pour the vinegar into the bucket, 
pouring enough so that the bottom of the pump is adequately submerged by several inches. Note that the vinegar level will drop when you first start the pump as it begins to draw the vinegar into the water heater. So be sure to have some extra vinegar handy to top up the level. Never let the vinegar get below the bottom of the pump, which will cause it to run dry and possibly become damaged. This is why you don't want to use a container that's too wide because now you're going to need more vinegar. So a couple of inches is good. And a gallon of vinegar will probably suffice, but keep an extra gallon handy just in case. Between the level of the vinegar and the bottom of the pump, we've got about two or three inches, and that's pretty good. Make sure that this return hose is not facing upward or else you're gonna get a nice surprise splash when you turn it on. You wanna make sure that it's facing downward and that it's even somewhat secured. Maybe you wanna use a clip of sorts to clip it against the bucket so that it doesn't splash upward and make your room all stinky when you turn it on. Okay, so now I think we're ready to plug it in. Plug in the pump and make sure that you see vinegar coming out of the hot side hose end and into the bucket. If everything appears to be running smoothly, let the pump run and do its thing for about a half hour or so. You'll probably see the vinegar start to discolor and even see some chunky pieces of scale coming out. That means it's working. After about a half hour, unplug the pump and disconnect the hose from the pump's outlet and let the rest of the vinegar drain out from the unit. At this point, you might want to check if your unit also has a filter to intercept any large debris. If it does, it's a good idea to remove it while the unit is relatively empty. And you do so, in this case, you're going to have to check with your manufacturer's instructions. But by removing a clip, you simply pull out the clip using a pair of pliers or needle nose. And you just pull it out by using a small flat screwdriver. You're going to get some water coming out. I'm not going to put a rag or a bucket underneath it. And there's a little filter. Clean it up and reinstall it before turning the water back on. Detach the hot and cold hoses from the tankless water heater and replace the service caps back onto the service valves. Hand tightening them snugly or very lightly using a pair of pliers. Slowly open the hot side, followed by the cold side, which will cause the water heater to start filling up with water. Before plugging the unit back in, flush the system by opening the hot side of a nearby fixture and run the water for a minute or so until any vinegar odor disappears. Back at the water heater, turn on the gas valve and plug in the water heater's power cord. Your unit should be scale free for the next 6 to 12 months, depending on the hardness of your water. Note that if you have a working water softener in your house, you can likely get away with descaling the unit significantly less frequently, but it's still a good idea to do so regardless, in case your softener isn't working as well as it should. And so that's how you descale a tankless water heater to make sure that it stays trouble free for years to come. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you got some value out of it. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Please feel free to subscribe to this channel. I'll be uploading all kinds of new content, and I really look forward to hearing what you guys want to see on this channel. Remember, this is your channel, and I make it for you. So if there's something in particular you want to learn about, let me know, and I'll see if I can make it happen. Till next time, thanks for watching.